So here we are outside. It's a little bit loud right now, so I'm gonna go head down to the pond to give you guys um, a bit better audio quality for this review. But I do have my score report right here. I'm gonna discuss everything and go over um, whether I still think this is a valuable exam or not after my further experiences I've had taking other certifications. So here we are with my score report for the CompTIA CYSA Plus Beta Version 2 exam. Now I took the beta, um, but since the beta is over now, you guys can take the full exam, unfortunately, also at full price. That's why I took the beta, because it was way cheaper. Um, but I have a, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the areas that I didn't, didn't do so well on, and whether I think that you should take this exam now in 2020. A quick note, um, one issue that you guys might have with the CompTIA CY, um, CompTIA exams in general is right now, right now we're in quarantine because of COVID-19 and so all the testing centers are closed. However, CompTIA as of April 16th made this a virtual non-issue by making their testing online. So now you have the option to take your tests online. Not sure if that's gonna exist past the quarantine, I hope it does, um, but anyway, just wanted to clear that up in case you do decide to take this exam. So the passing score for this exam was 750 points. The high score you could possibly get was a 900, and I got a 771. Now, I expected to pass this exam, so I'm glad I did. I passed um, by a margin of 21 points, which is pretty good from what I was looking around seeing and my friends scores and just other people in general on Discord reporting their scores, the upper 70, 770s was about the highest that anyone had gotten. So I was pretty good as far as the score came along um, for the beta. The CompTIA CYSA Plus Cybersecurity Analyst Plus Certification beta exam had a scaled score between 100 and 900. So you can expect that to be pretty much the same for the actual exam. Now we're gonna go ahead and cover some of the areas that I didn't do so well on and look at maybe um, just to give you guys some things that you can hit on because I did cover um, some areas in my last video. The link for my original review will be in the description below and I highly recommend you go watch it if you're looking to take the actual exam now because it has some really good pointers in it that will probably help you on the exam day. So the first section was 1.1 that I missed. It was explaining the importance of threat data and intelligence. So this is um, something that I thought I would have gotten because of just working in a security operations center environment. Um, but then again, it, I could have only answered one question incorrect. I think it was a 90 question exam or something like that. Next section was 1.4, giving a scenario, analyze the output from common vulnerability assessment tools. So apparently i didn't do so good i'm pretty sure there was some in-map scans so i probably just messed up on the analysis of those i'm not sure exactly but anyway like i said from common vulnerability assessment tools so that would be output from tools such as openvas 
in map nessus etc i'm not saying these were on the exam i'm just saying these are common vulnerability assessment tools we also have 1.5 explain the threats and vulnerabilities associated with specialized technology i'm assuming now i don't have a super great memory considering this is four months ago but that probably had to deal with something like information of things the iot um, maybe mo mobile devices or something like that next we have 1.7 given a scenario implement controls to mitigate attacks and software vulnerabilities so that would be things like antivirus firewall stuff etc um, again this is not an overview of all the categories of the exam just the ones that I missed so apparently I missed a question in that I don't know why um, also I missed a question in 2.1 given a scenario apply security solutions for infrastructure management that's more of like security policy kind of things um, I would think so you know applying the correct policies to secure the infrastructure etc 2.2 explain software assurance best practices 2.3 explain hardware assurance best practices I missed a qu one or more questions in each of those sections then we have 3.1 given a scenario analyze data as part of a security monitoring activity so this will be looking at logs etc which is what i do a ton now so I, i'm confident that now i would have a lot more of a chance of getting this right than i did before because that's what i do all day next we have 3.2 given a scenario implement configuration changes to existing existing controls to improve security so this is not adding controls this is improving the existing ones by making changes to those controls 4.1 explain the importance of the incident response process so apparently I didn't do so great on that then again I didn't study for this exam at all so I probably had some stuff wrong in the process of incident response 4.4 given a scenario utilize basic digital forensic techniques again I wasn't so great at that however I do have um, the certified incident handler so probably those last two or three sections I would do a lot better at now just because I've studied that kind of stuff before and incident handler had a ton of forensics in that section 5.1 is understand the importance of data privacy and protection again I must have missed a question in that um, it's pretty easy to understand the importance of data privacy and protection so maybe I just misclicked I don't know maybe that you know the maybe the specific question was one that I got wrong and lastly, 5.3, explain the importance of frameworks, policies, procedures, and controls. So this would be the importance of frameworks like NIST, um, their ISO frameworks or whatever, etc. things like that. Um, so yeah, I did pretty decent at the exam, I feel like. Um, I got a 771 out of the top nine, um, out of 900. And it seemed like that's a lot of people were getting in the 770s. Um, a few got in 780, but mostly the 770 range or 760 range. So I scored about average for my thing. And since I did not study for this exam, I considered this a very good pass for not studying at all. However, since my last review, I've obviously changed some. You know, I got the beard going. That's more recent, um, but not. And that's why I'm wearing the sunglasses and shirt. Actually, it's kind of a throwback to my last review. But um, not so much that. I've learned a lot more than I knew back then at the time of that review. So now I'm going to go ahead and go over my recommendations for what certifications you should be pursuing in 2020 that are this or similar to this. Basically, should you take take this exam in 2020 or should you go for something a bit different? Whether you take this exam in 2020 or not is really dependent on a few key factors. First, what level are you in your security knowledge? Or do you know nothing about cybersecurity? If you don't know anything about cybersecurity, I highly recommend that you go for the CompTIA Security Plus exam. That teaches you the basic fundamentals of security. I highly recommend you study for that by watching Professor Messer's Security Plus YouTube videos series. Link for that will be in the description um, because it's really, really good. I may even have one up here if um, YouTube lets me. I'm not sure because I can't leak to external sources, but I might can link to his YouTube video, so we'll see. If you're aiming for a SOC analyst type role, this certification is perfect for you. This will give you sort of the knowledge that you need to become a SOC analyst. It goes over all the things that a SOC analyst does. As I was a SOC analyst at the time of 
making that um, at the time of taking this exam and it was very accurate as to what I was doing. Now I'm a spunk engineer, so I've kind of moved on from the SOC analyst role in our security operations center. But I can tell you for sure that that really aligned with the duties that I had. Maybe even a bit more advanced than what I in my particular situation had to utilize. Another exam that I took and put a review on link to that will also be in the description below is the ISC squared SSCP, System Security Certified Practitioner exam. And what that is, is that's, with all these exams, I kind of consider the SSCP to be the top. CYSA plus is kind of the middle and security plus is the bottom as far as levels of seniority with the certifications. All of these certifications kind of build on each other despite the SSCP being an IC squared exam. Um, they all kind of build on each other. So if you're aiming for more of a security engineer type role, I would definitely be, I would definitely choose the system security certified practitioner exam. Um, and then maybe from there on go on up to the CISSP or the OSCP, depending on what your interests are and where they lie. So in short, yes, I do recommend this exam in 2020. It was a really great exam and I thoroughly enjoyed taking it. If you are aiming to be a security engineer, maybe you're already a SOC analyst, I might would go for the SSCP instead of the COISA Plus, but nonetheless, it is a really great exam that I highly recommend to anyone who's new to certifications. And with that, I'll go ahead and close out this video. If you like this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already so you can see more related content just like this. Also, follow me on Twitter for updates to the channel. That's where I post when I'm going to be posting videos and information about what videos I'm going to be posting in advance. Also, make sure you go back and watch my CompTIA CYSA Plus review. Link will be in the description below and at the end screen of this video so that way it'll make it really easy for you to go watch it's a great video detailing the stuff about this exam sscp link will also be in the description if you're wanting to take that exam as well thank you for watching this is super tau 3 signing out <laughs>